Okay, so I know this is sooner than I said I was going to be back on here, but I figured I would go ahead and get my wedding cake tears ice before I ate dinner, and so I promised I would show you that. So this is the 8-inch round, the center tier, the bourbon pecan. Um, and I've got it iced, I've got it scraped. I did not use the vegan pepper towel to smooth it because, like I said before, when it's textured, you don't need to do that. So, this is a small, scrape it off, angled spatula. I'm gonna take the end of it. It's angled, I don't know how to explain that, but towards the cake. The bend of the, of the uh, spatula is towards the cake. But you're really only going to put the very end of it, basically. Flat at the end. I'm going to place it here on the base of the cake. I hope you can see this. And I'm just spinning the turntable until it comes back and meets it. I'm not spinning my spatula. And then I'm scraping off the excess that comes off with it back into my icing bucket. And then I'm going to go right above that and do another round. Again, it's built up. Scrape it off. I do it again. Back around, scrape. Back around, scrape. Just a couple more should do it. Last one. it creates like these rings all the way around and this is very rustic looking but what I'm gonna do you can leave it just like this um, and if it was like a birthday cake and you weren't gonna stack it you could smooth the top out and write on it and decorate it however you wanted to this could just be your size this particular cake I am gonna smooth it slightly with a Viva paper towel all those little icing I call them flyaways those little pieces that kind of get pulled off when you go around I don't like that. So I'm going to grab a, a Viva paper towel, the smooth side, and instead of using my hand and like smoothing it up and down, I'm actually going to let my fingers fall into those lines, into those grooves I created, so it still keeps that same effect. And I'm just barely touching it. I mean, I'm barely just, and it just ba basically takes those little flyaway pieces and pushes them down so they don't stick out anymore. And it just gives you a little bit more of a finished look but like I said I've done it both ways sometimes if it's a wedding and they really are going for a rustic look I won't do this I'll leave it as is because they want a more homemade natural look and now that's all I have to do to the side so the top I am going to smooth out a little bit so you don't see ridges um even though there's going to be another tier on top of this you will see a little bit of the edging so I want to make sure there's no lines on those edges Now also just barely touch the edges of the tear to make sure it's nice and round and not like any little pieces sticking out. Like that. Now, I'm also gonna go ahead and put my dowels on while we're on here so you can see me do that. Um, because a six inch is going on top of this, nothing really heavy, I use these skinny plastic dowels I ordered off Amazon. The bottom tier that I've already done and put dowels in are thicker plastic dowels because they're supporting two more tiers. So what you want to do, just the whole thing before I cut it, and you want to do four under each tier. So I'm going to create like a square in the middle where the six inch would be. So I'm going to put one in there. And then I'm going to use my thumb to mark it and then pull it back out. That's where I know where it is. And then you can use scissors on some of these small ones, but you can also use something like this, like little fire looking things, and cut that. Maybe. Yeah. And then you're going to use that one as a guide to cut three more so they all look the same. And then you would put them into the cake. And I'll show you that too. Let me go ahead and cut my other ones. If this was a larger cake I would not stack this until I got there because I'm traveling with it but since I since it's a three-tier cake and it's not super heavy it's a lot easier to travel with and so I am going to go ahead and get it stacked while I've got it here at the house and it just saves me a little bit of time when I get there to drop off the cake back in. I'm going to 
gonna put another one directly across from it. And then on the other side, I get a square and the other side. Okay, let's see. And I'll actually bring over this over so you can see what I'm talking about. So see how I've gotten, whoa, that's not the right angle at all. Sorry. See how I've got the four? And then over here is the one I've already done. Let's see if I can get that in there so you can see that. I hope I'm not making anybody nauseous. So that has the bigger dowels in it. And that's what it's going to look like. Can you even see that? Nope. There it is. The lines. Sorry. I'm not tech savvy. So anyway. So here shortly I will ice the six inch round, the top tier. And then I will um, start to stack them. And once I get them stacked, I will grab in a really skinny, like wooden skewer, um, once they're all three stacked, and nail that through the very center of all three tiers. And that's gonna keep them from sliding off each other during travel. Um, but if this was a bigger cake and I wasn't gonna stack the top two tiers until I got there, then obviously I wouldn't have to worry about that because once it's there, it's not moving. That is really just for travel purposes. Um, these bottom two tiers, really the chance of them going anywhere you'd have to almost have a wreck for them to really come off each other but the top tier because it's so high up does have the ability to move back and forth if you don't have something secure in it throughout the entire middle let me see who's on here sue michelle mary begley hello people so thank you for joining me um so anyway so yeah the best the, sip, the uh, wedding cake this week not too crazy and difficulty as far as decorations go Obviously, because it's fairly simple, I'm putting flowers on it when I get there. They're going to have flowers waiting for me. And also, once I stack these, there will, you'll be able to see the separation between the tiers. So I'll go back with some more icing and just pipe a little bit more through there and then smooth it back out so it looks like it's one continuous cake. They didn't want a bead border or anything like that, so I will just kind of smooth it out with a little bit of icing. So that's my wedding cake. It also has a groom's cake, so I'm going to do that later. But actually... It's not too bad either. So nothing too crazy. So it'll probably be a while before I'm back on here. Um, I'm going to, like I said, finish the wedding cake, eat dinner, and start on the groom's cake. So it'll probably be a little bit before I get back on here. But thank you for watching. Hey, Stephanie. What? I have a three-tier cake turn over before. No fun making them twice. No, it is no fun making them twice. Oh, my gosh. Um, the only time I can think of that I had one, like, fall fall like completely on me um, was years and years and years ago it was the set most only the second wedding cake I'd ever made and it was buttercream and I didn't know then how to really support it I was guessing I used the totally wrong dowels it was a disaster anyway it was a three tier the bottom tier completely just broke down the middle like collapsed and the top two tiers just fell inside it luckily it happened while I was still at my house so I had the tools, and so what I did was I just had to throw away the bottom tier. I mean, there was no fixing that. And I called them, like the coordinator, and I was like, oh my gosh. Luckily I knew them, and I said, the bottom tier is a disaster. And she, and she was like, D just bring the top two tiers. Are they usable? I said, oh yeah, so I fixed those, you couldn't even tell. And it was, they also were getting like 200 cupcakes. So that was really what was feeding most people anyway. So I set it up, Bride didn't even know until two days later when somebody told her, hey, did you realize you were supposed to have a three tier and you only had two tiers? So that was wonderful. Now. There have been times I've had customers pick up two to three tiered cakes and call me later and say that something happened, whether they had to slam on their brakes or whatever. Sometimes it's fixable, sometimes it's not, but it is not a good time. It is not a good time. It is literally a decorator's worst nightmare. But every time it happens, whether it's to me or a customer I know that has had to happen to them, has taught me a little bit. Um, like I dowel and stack my cakes completely different than I used to. Um, and I even tried at one point the big plastic plates that you put the cake board on. I had, I was like double side taping the board to the plate and then you had to attach these legs in that you screwed in and it was a whole big thing. But it was really expensive, number one, to buy those for every single wedding cake or tear cake that went out the door. And I just felt like it limited me on the height of each tier because you had to match it up with the dowels and I, I didn't... I didn't love it. It was secure, but I didn't love the process. And so I changed it again. So this is actually like my fourth round on 
how I stack caked. This is the one I've been doing for several years now, and I haven't had any problems with it since I started doing this. But, yes, it is a total pain in the butt, and I swear by these plastic dowels, even though they are just from Amazon, they are sturdy. The wooden skewer, like that you would just like literally put a skewer on your grill with meat on it, like that's what I use from Kroger or Walmart, nailed down through the middle. That little skewer does so much to keep it from moving back and forth. Um, so I never do without that now. Never, ever, ever. But, okay, so I'm gonna pop off here, finish my wedding cake, eat my dinner, and I will check in with you all in a few hours. Bye.